Just a wee disclaimer. This is so awkward vlogging. Shirtless, dressed as a Scottish giant, Mark dressed as a little wee Irish baby giant. We already found the use for our blanket. So when you come to the Giant's Causeway, we don't recommend you do this. Good morning guys, we're in Bushmills. We're actually just outside of the village of Bushmills in Northern Ireland at the world famous world heritage site, the Giant's Causeway. So there's like this big cliff right here and it's blocking the sun. It's great because we only got down here at like 9 o'clock, but it really feels like we got here at, at sunrise because the sun is just rising over the cliff. From a purely informational, touristic aspect, it's about a 15 minute walk from the visitor center, which is up there, um, but they do have a bus running and it costs a pound 50. According to myth, Giant's Causeway was formed by two giants. The Irish giant, Finn McCool, and the Scottish one, Ben and Donner. Ben and Donner challenged Finn to a fight, and so Finn built the causeway to connect here with Scotland. There's two explanations for what happened next. The first is that Finn McCool beat Ben and Donner fair and square. The second is that Finn tricked Ben and Donner because he saw he was too big to fight. He dressed himself up like a baby and had his wife carry him around to make Ben and Donner think, oh, he's just a wee baby, but he's huge. I can't imagine how big Finn is. Ben and I went running back to Scotland and destroyed the causeway in his wake so that Finn McCool could not chase him back and continue the fight. There's about 40,000 of these basalt columns. They all erupted out of the earth around 50 million years ago when molten lava came down and uh, was cooled instantaneously by the sea, which is how the rock kind of took on this interesting formation. And I think that's why people are so intrigued by it. Also, the stones just make a perfect natural seat. Check this out. Oh, armrest included. What do you think? Super beautiful, super interesting. Only 60 kilometers to Scotland, so this is the North Channel right here. And it's really easy to see not just the geographical connections, but the cultural, linguistic, Gaelic and Gaelic, the two languages from Scotland and Ireland are related. So giants are not the only people who compete around these parts. Hurling is a Gaelic sport that is also very popular here. So Michael here at Scully and Hurls is an artisan uh, craftsman and he is gonna show us how to make the equipment and then how to play the game. Let's go. Uh, hi, my name's Michael Scullion and we're in Scullion Hurls, which is our family business where we produce hurling sticks used for the Irish game of hurling. It's an ancient sport, um, they believe it to be over 2,000 years old. So the hurling stick is made from one piece of solid ash uh, and it's actually the root of the ash tree that we use. So this is one of them here, you can see. So this would be the piece that's, that's buried in the ground and this tree could be 30 or 40 years old and it's knocked and we only use the bottom four foot so you get that natural turn that comes from the root and that's where we get the shape which you'll see in the finished hurling stick. I can make one in about 10 minutes. Where we're in here in, in County Antrim, we call it a hurl or a hurling stick. If you were to go further uh, south in Ireland, they'll call it a hurley. Uh, the traditional Irish name is a command. Wow, so how do you play? Guys, this is so similar to lacrosse. 
I think I found my new favorite sport from a different country. Back in the day, like in the lead up to independence uh, for Ireland, like uh, Gaelic sports along with Gaelic language were a huge thing of a part of the Irish identity. So you can tell by my game skills, my lack of speaking Gaelic, that I have about 15% Irish blood in me. Where is the best place to see a game? Well, this weekend we have championship locally. So we have two semi-finals. Um, one's taking place up in Belfast this evening, and the other is taking place tomorrow evening in Glenravel, which is about five, 10 miles from here. So is this a professional sport here? All amateur. Conclusion, hurling in Northern Ireland is like football in West Texas. It's just the thing to do. And the other thing to do is to drive along the coast. So we are gonna go do that and go to a really beautiful, picturesque place to round out the day. Alright guys, we just got to Carrick Reed Rope Bridge, which is this famous little rope bridge connecting two rocks. Let's go check it out. So we're at Carrick Reed right now. It's a place that was built by fishermen, salmon fishermen. It's a small little bridge that uh, only eight people can fit on at a time. They remade it a couple years ago to make it more sturdy, but it's still pretty packed. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the entrance of the rope bridge. This is the moment of truth right now. We'll see how it is. I think that you have to basically get in line, wait to go across, and then you have like 10 minutes on the other side, and then you have to wait again to go back. All right, here we go. You know, people often ask us how we like balance filming and traveling. And I always say that it's super important to take moments during your day to like kind of put the camera down and just enjoy it. So I think this is one of those moments. Well guys, it has been such a awesome day exploring the Causeway Coastal Road. And uh, I think we need to come back here, bro. One day is not enough. For sure, but tomorrow, the adventure continues. We're going to Belfast. We're gonna be doing some awesome stuff, including eating some amazing food. So stay tuned until tomorrow's episode. If you like the video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Bag Brothers, and share this video with your friends. In the meantime, remember to stay curious, keep exploring, and we will see you guys on the road in Belfast. Peace!